Hey guys, what's going on? Skimmy here, back at it again with another video. Here we bringing you today ANZ Season 2 Summer Championship Finals. Joined by me today is Maru as we bring you some of the games that actually weren't brought to you live on the day. This is actually going to be game number one of uh, Gus and Five up against Tootsies in the winner's bracket. Maru, why don't you kick it off for us on the blue hand side for Gus and Five? Yeah, for Gus and Five, we've got KVA on the ETC, Kruven on the Karazim, we've got uh, and I got on the Sylvanas, Arcaner on the Thrall, and John on the Falstad. That's correct. And for Tootsies, we have against Tom and Sonya, Penta Unleash on the Mirrodin, Revolve to Sob on Leeming, Jetty on the Valor, and Luminum on the Rega. Now, Mario, what are you thinking? For level one, are we going to see any aggression? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see, especially from <clears throat> from the red side here, just because they do have that beef, beefy kind of frontline. Uh, Capabilities, you know, with the Sonya, the Murden, obviously, uh, Bolt of the Storm got got those stuns early on. I think I think they could really try and make something happen here. Yeah, for but, sure, man. Yeah. You can see blue side obviously starting to posture up. They're going to go for that wave clear. Red side sort of a little bit more split out, but we can see right now level one's just going to be a case of just clearing that lane as quickly as possible, and then going for this sort of standard matchup of going the one one three. Yeah, I mean, Gus and Five playing it really conservatively. They, I mean, they all stuck together in mid, just cleared that wave. Thrall obviously rotating down bottom. Well, looks like it's just going to be a four-man uh, kind of roam squad between top and mid here. Um, they're probably just going to you know clear out the waves, uh, keep keep uh, walking between mid and top, and, and try to you know catch their opponents out of position or, just, or something like this. Perhaps etc getting in there. Murden though is too beefy, just not quite yet uh, able to take him down there. Yeah, definitely. You can see obviously it's going to be Sonya up against Thrall, two of the strongest bruises right now in the meta. I mean, yeah. generally speaking, you're going to think that Sonya's going to win that lane, just has a little bit more sustain, a little bit more sort of punch on ability in that 1v1 duel, but, you know, any uh, any surprise matchups here? You can see John already flying down, trying to actually get a gank in the bot lane, but no, it doesn't actually eventuate into anything, but here we go, ETC already getting into a bit of a pickle, oh. he actually does get taken out, Maru, against time pretty low as well, they're going to actually turn onto uh, Arcano as well, he actually drops as well, Maru, that's two people straight away for Gus and Five, taking out the fight so early on into this game. Yeah, trying to get a little tricky there with, with the false side flying, but the ETC getting caught out of position, you know, even, even though you're a tank and you're super, super beefy, when you get caught out like that, you know, with, with four guys wheeling away on you, you're just not going to survive here. And now, some coins getting handed in on the red side here, they really want to just kind of unload those, don't want to lose them later on. You know, it really kind of gives you the, the freedom to just, you know, to, to, to be fearless in, in your trades. Yes, you can see Gustav 5, they have Sylvanas. Now, Sylvanas are really good, uh, really... Good pickup on this map, obviously, for the wave claim, for the ability to sort of disable those structures. Do you really think Gustin 5's strategy here is to try and uh, abuse the, the Sylvanas? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think their composition overall is a bit more uh, objective oriented. You know, you've got the global presence from Falstad as well. So he can kind of fly around, get, get coins, clear waves. Um, especially with Gust as well, you can really di you know, decide when the engagements happen. So that, you know, you can really disengage extremely effectively. You can also set up sick. Uh, engagements if you can find the room to kind of fly behind them so i think you know gus and five are just going to kind of stay safe focus on the objective and as you said use the sylvanas once they have the objective to really maximize that potential um and, you know and then try to win win the game that way that's it that's it and there we go you see both teams now picking up at level four as we approach three minutes into this game we're looking at the talents anything that really surprised you so early on into this game um nothing in particular anything on your side no, I mean, just looking at it, it's pretty standard across the board, yeah. really. I mean, the only thing that really uh, sort of uh, catches my eye is the, ca the fact that Karazim has actually picked up the uh, Healing Ward as opposed to the uh, Protective yeah. Shield, which is usually something that we see on these smaller maps. Gives you a little bit mm -hmm. more sort of um, sustained ability to punch on. Yeah. Uh, but actually, uh, Maru, I'm going to cut myself off there. Maru, as uh, Lee actually gets taken out there, as a beautiful gank comes out by Gustav the Father, looking for a little bit more aggression. But Jetty's just going to peel himself out there. He's quite low on mana, so Valor's not going to actually want to punch on with that one. As they now rotate between mid lane to uh, top, and uh, it looks like Gustav Five going to deposit a fair chunk of coins. They have 33 in their possession. That's a big deposit so early on. Yeah, I mean, Tootsie's not really keeping up with the rotations here. The Murden was down in the middle lane, just kind of. Wailing away at, at, at the creeps while, uh, you know, Gustin 5 had 4 guys in position to kind of get get on top of the Leeming, the squishy, you know, uh, range DPS characters. You really want to, you know, take those out, deny their ability to to contribute in, in, in any form early on. It's really nice. And now, actually, the the EXP lead that the red side had, had acquired from killing 
ETC and Rhaegar early on has pretty much just disappeared and, and it's even game. Yeah, you can see that there's Gust of Five trying to actually make a bit of aggression going towards Shady there in the top hand side, but thankfully Shady's got that map awareness to really sort of back out from harm's way without getting any uh any kills really pressured on towards him. Revolt is off doing a beautiful job there, chucking out the Arcane Orbs. He's actually going for this Arcane Orb build uh, to really try and just chuck out that sort of backline siege damage, and he's just doing a great job right now, chucking out those uh chucking out those abilities to try and prevent Gustav Five going in for those all ins. But you know, level seven's picked up by uh, Tootsie. They've got a slight Whoa. little lead at the start, and you can see they're in there going to get a huge chunk. Sylvanas dropping quite low. John's actually caught in a bit of a position, forced a barrel crawl across, and the first web weavers go for Tootsies. Yeah, it's a really big opportunity to get some uh, experience on, on their side and really kind of get a level advantage, perhaps, you know, to try and compound that advantage into the late game. Uh, against time, forcing him to, to retreat for now. Uh, he just wants to, you know, top off his health so he can really join the team and and uh, push together with his web weavers. I'm actually interested to see whether or not they're going to, you know, all all going to push one lane or if they're going to kind of soak and, and get minimal seizing damage down here because... You know, either one's a pretty decent option. Yeah, it's kind of like the big debate, really. Like, some teams decide to all in and try and get as much value out of it as possible. Some yeah. teams actually split push and try and just soak yeah. as much as possible. They view it more of a sort of XP um, advantage. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, right now, the able uh, advantages really are quite equal across um, both teams. So, you can see right now where uh, Tootsies have decided to rotate up to the top. Yep. The uh, mid web weaver has actually dropped. So now they're going to get two tails to three, which is going to give them that slight XP advantage. But, you know, right now, still, Mario, it's pretty uh, pretty even Stevens. Yeah, nicely played by red side. You know, they're kind of shoved mid um, and then forced, you know, their, their, their opponent's gusted five to, to come to middle and then rotate straight to top. Now they, they've gotten rid of the wall. That extra EXP obviously going to be on the table here. Nearly half a level advantage now. So it's a decent little, little chunk of EXP gained here by the red side. Not, 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 not an insane amount, no, no uh, hero kills went down or anything. Uh, ni nicely played by Gustin Five as well, playing it safe, just defending, didn't even lose the wall in yeah. mid lane. Yeah, and you can I see like Gustin Five actually, Arcana actually, as Frawl stuck in the bot lane the whole time there. He's just trying to soak as much as possible, and that's a good thing that I like to see from these teams, is they don't need to actually invest everyone as possible. They can just sort of sit pretty and hang on for a bit, but you can see Arcana already taking a big brutal damage here from Sonya Faust and flying in there. He's going to try and get the damage on there. Goes the Hammering. They're going to try and burst down Sonya as quick as possible. Sonya is actually getting in the mix. She takes out Frawl as Mirrodin jumps into the fight. The Stormbolt connects. There comes Kerosene now, trying to top up everyone as possible. KVA comes up with a power slide. He goes on towards Sonya. Sonya gets taken out, but the Gorms are still available. And they got dropping very low. The rain dash comes out. Well, actually, the haunted oh. wave, I should say. Sylvanas gets dropped in the mix. That's two for one right now in favor of Tootsies. And uh, well, it looks like they're actually going to go towards the golems and finally finish that off. But Tootsie's going to be very pleased with that one, Maru. Interesting choice by the Thrall to just try and solo that camp. I mean, he, he knew that the Falstad could come to back him up. But as you said before, you know, Sonya just kind of... It, it get, comes out on top in these 1v1 duels against yeah. the Thrall, especially because he was already chunked to half health. You know, he, he, he'd been working on that camp for a while. It just didn't end up working in their favor. And now with that level 10 lead, with the ultimate abilities ready to go for the red side, they should try and make something happen here. Yeah, definitely. I really think Mario, they're going to sort of force a fight with that level 10 advantage. Obviously, Gustin 5, not too far from it, but there comes oh. the leap. The damage comes out. The Stormbolt connects with Thrall, instantly disintegrated. And then Aegon's got nowhere to run. Actually, yeah, Kruven, I should say. Karazim dropped from the fight. It's a two for none. Clean exchange, clean trade in the bot lane. They've got the Web Weavers actually in favor of Gustin 5, but it's going to be completely negated by this five man rotation. As Gustin 5 try and even out the balance by pushing in the top hand side here. Well played by the red side. They kind of stayed in the bottom handing point out of vision of Gustin 5, which made them think probably that they were just sitting in, behind their walls ready to defend. But it, it, in reality, they, they, they were really posturing to, to get some kills down at bottom and even take down the fortifications there. And it really ended up working in their favor. Yeah, that's it. And when we were looking into this game, we'll say eight minutes uh, into this one. 11k damage coming out to Sylvanas, but the real MVP right now, 17k, nearly 18k actually coming out of that Jelly Valor. He's really doing quite a bit of uh, work on there, and no surprises. Once again, Strafe has come out from him. He's a big fan of this one, but there comes the Mighty Gust. As uh, John tries to force a bit of aggression, they do some damage on towards the Valor, but nothing's going to substantiate from it. Here comes the Power Slide on towards the Mirrodin, not the target you want. The Strafe connects as the Ancestral hits on as well. The fight turns south, but the... Uh, the strafe isn't enough. Kruven dropping rather low, but they're just going to back out from this one. And once again, Tootsie's with a one level advantage. Yeah, that whole time Sonya had been working on the, the night camp here. Just <laughs> barely manages to take that. And actually, Very low. Yeah, that's super nice as well. I mean, she wasn't in the fight that whole time. And now 
Um, without losing any members of their team, this is a really nice, nice pickup of the Mercs. That's exactly it. And you can see right now that uh, Tootsies really have their eyes focused on hitting level 13 first. Uh, really abusing once again that talent tier advantage and forcing their uh, advantage as uh, they've been doing so far. You can see right now they've got the uh, structural advantage, they've got the kill advantage, and they've got the level advantage. So right now Tootsies is in a really good spot and you can see Cave, yeah, they're trying to force a bit of aggression. He's getting really hopped on as Sonya comes on free, she might actually pick up the kill, she does, oh. as uh, Faust actually drops really low as well, the, uh, oh, the Divine Bomb connects with Sylvanas, it's good, it connects, it completely connects, and it goes on through, he's actually been resurrected, but the Stormbolt comes across, Sonya picks up the kill, once again a 2-0 trophy for Tootsies, and I'm in such an impactful lead. Yeah, I don't know, the, the support choice for Karazin, like, Karazin needs to be fighting to really maximize his his healing potential and when a team like Tootsie kind of jumps on to, onto you and you're when you're playing Karazim defensively trying to retreat you're just really not able to get the heals onto your teammates that you know is required to survive and we as, as we saw you know the, the ETC went down pretty easily there and then you know with a follow-up kill onto the Sylvanas now Tootsie's really kind of extending their their EXP lead that oh my I'm gonna have to quickly careful. interrupt you there because there goes the Jetty strafe comes the Moshpit as well onto three members so oh. so good oh Jetty's completely zoned from the side he might actually get picked off there he does by Sylvanas beautiful pick by him the Moshpit really uses a distraction to try and lock up three members but they pick off the Jetty actually Rhaegar died before that as well so great try by them oh Muradin's looking pretty deep there he does get the little one toss the Stormbuck comes out doesn't actually connect but it's a great trade that's exactly what Gustin 5 needed to try and equal out this level deficit yeah, Tootsie's kind of corner the dog that is Gustin5, and they bit back, finally getting some kills on the board for themselves, and now, you know, handing in some more coins, just unloading those, and we'll see, because because the initiative is on their side now, uh, with a member of their opponent having gone down, they can just kind of do whatever they want, they, they're pretty much guaranteed to have the initiative, it looks like they're just going work, to work on mid-tower, mid, mid -tower, you know, get, get some more EXP, really kind of catch up on the level, uh, level phase here. Yeah, and there we go. Level 13 now picked up into this game. Looking at the talents, anything that really jumps out to you? I like the spell shield on Sonya. Um, you know, really, it works really well against the Thrall, uh, as well as the Sylvanas, stuff like that. Oh, I'm gonna have to quickly interrupt you there, Mario. There goes the lead, and there's a forced engage, comes across from Sonya. She jumps on towards Arcana. Oh, beautiful Divine Palm. It comes across, but it gets completely baited out. It gets weighted, and Thrall gets taken out for free there. Sylvanas drops as well. That's a 2 trade so far, as they find a oh. third kill into this one, Mario. It's a complete decimation. They're looking on towards KV now. This will be a 4-0 trade. Tootsie's really looking strong right now. Four people die for Gustin 5 and Tootsie is going to push this bottom lane out. Yeah, I, uh, the, the healing ward pick from Karazim is really kind of bothering me a little bit because it gets it gets taken out by by the Vala multi-shot in, in one shot, right? Right. Like, every fight, I, I see it go up and it just disappears within a second and it just doesn't get the value that it, that it needs to, to be worth the pick of the talent. And now... You know, Tootsie is really pushing the, the bottom lane here. They're probably going to get this port now. Oh, and there goes the Sundry, no! Had, oh. had Tootsie set around for too long, there goes the Sundry. The damage comes across. Jetty's going to be the first one to drop from this. Oh, uh, Gustin5 looking for more. Is the flight available for John? It is! He comes across this hit. The Gust that Gust connects. The Power Slide too. That's another two members that look to see that they're going to drop. The Marsh Pit comes to secure the kill. Muradin and Sonya drop as well. Uh, Kenny comes across. The Feral Spirit connects with Luminum. Can he chase on this? Spirit Totem comes across. Does he have enough movement speed to chase on? No. Luminum runs out of that one. He's quite healthy. And, well, it looked like Tootsie stayed around just a little bit too long. A little bit too confident with their level lead. Yeah, but they did get that bottom keep, though. So now the bottom lane is going to continuously push in favor of Tootsies. And that's something Gus and Five have to keep in, in mind. Because they can't commit all their members to different parts of the map for, for elongated you know, periods of time now. Because... As I said, the minions are just going to keep pushing the core, and they really need to be careful of this going further. Yeah, you can see that Lee Ming sort of posturing in that sort of side brush, trying to get some damage across with the Arcane Orb. Doesn't connect this time, but you can see she's been doing such a great job so far. If we bring up the damage, you can see there's 28k coming from the Fausta, but the real MVP right now, once again, is the Jetty's Vala. 38k. As he does pop the strafe down, the leap comes across, hits three people. Oh. The Stormbolt 2 does actually bait out the Divine Palm, but the foul said Mighty Gus comes to try and prevent any aggression coming from that. And I think we're going to see a clean disengage, Mario. Yeah, a great value out of that Gus. They knew they couldn't take that fight. The level 16 talent in advance uh, on the side of Tootsies really was giving that advantage. He actually begun the boss. 
Wow. And I, I mean, they, they know that they chunk their opponents down pretty pretty low, so this if a fight happens, they could, you know, take this very favorably. Wow, Gustin 5 decided to actually give that one up to him, rightfully so, they have no ultimates across the board. Gustin 5 in a bit of a disaster situation right now, as soon as he try and force the fight, the Wolven Toss actually gets chucked at defensively, but the boss now working on towards his top fault. And we're going to see how much uh, value this gets out of this as Tootsie's try and posture up for a good fight here. They have level 16, Mario. They're going to have that level advantage. The power side comes across. The ancestral comes through. Does connect onto Sonya there. And she spins to win, trying to sustain herself as much as possible. Oh, we're going to see any kills coming across. The Stormbot is available any second now. It connects with KVA. He stuns one too. KVA drops straight away. The straight doing so much value. There goes the second kill. There goes the triple kill as Kerosene uh -oh. drops as well. They're finding kills left, right, and center. Faust at the fourth casualty in this one. It's only Sylvanas left right now. And Tootsie's in such a commanding lead, Maru. Yeah, I don't know if this can be stopped. This could just be oh, the right clean here, right ace. Now. Wow. Oh, there we go. <laughs> five men sweep and five guys alive for good season. No way to level 15. Boss pushing is on. They're working on the core. This is, looks like game one is going to go to Tootsies here. Very well played. I mean, they, it, it kind of happened exactly as, as I thought it would, you know? Um, Gus and five had that more objective oriented. Uh, composition. They, they got a few more well weavers, but at the end of the day, Tootsie's just got the the positive trades over and over again. That they, they just couldn't hold on. Yeah, that's exactly it. So there we go. Tootsie's take game number one in this winners bracket final. It's a best of three. So I we'll have a game two coming up right after this one. Stay tuned.